What's up, guys? It's the Michael Under Twenty Seven. I'm back. Uh, taking a little break, but I'm here again. And today I'm reviewing The Last of Us Remastered for PS4. Now this is a remastering of last year's um, game called Last of Us. And I'm just say right now that Last of Us Remastered in the original. This is gonna count as a review for both PS3 and PS4, but mostly this one. So, um, I I I had the PS3 copy, thanks my brother, but I never had a chance to review it due to my um my reasons of it was too late for me to review it and I wanted to do it. It was too late and then some people didn't watch it, so I thought I'll wait for the remastered version to review. So let's go. Do it up by Naughty Dog and came out this year, July 29th, right? How is it? Is it a good remastering package? Is it good? In my opinion, it's a great game, still as great as last year's um, version. And heck, in my opinion, it's one of the best um, games on the next generation and on the last generation. In other words, it's the best game on PS4, in my opinion, and the best game on PS3. So, what is the story really about? Well, it takes, pl it's, um, takes place 20 years after the infection, where it's based on a realistic tone of ants have the ants have an infection of fungus which spread to humans. And I actually thought this was a really great twist on the old horror zombie apocalypse post apocalypse world genre. Because it's always been like all oh, the dead is filled or some like cough or like if we are all infected or something something like that. Like we're all infected and if we die we become a walker or something like that. But this takes a different take on it. It takes a realistic tone and it's not like oh it's just the dead um, it's too many people in hell, so they come back to life. Instead, it takes a more realistic tone, which is nature's fault, why we're in this post-apocalyptic world. Now, the game stars, you play as Joel, who, um, basically uh, takes place, the first few minutes of the game takes place before the apocalypse, where it starts, and then the game starts off 20 years after the events, where Joel is basically in Boston, along with, a uh, part, uh, part of his name, Tess, and they basically do uh, smuggling jobs, and they basically live in a dystopia type of world, even though they are protected by military, the military aren't really good because they they check every day on who's like um, infected and they kill them or something like that. And the game really evolves on this type of tone of really seeing what would uh, humanity be after an infection takes place 20 years later, what would be le left of us? Would there be any humanity left or would we just be survivors? And the game really has this type of message going through it entirely. And basically, later on, you basically meet the uh, Fireflies, who is this group of people who go against the military, so they want to be dictated by the military. And they basically fight bandits, and they basically want their own freedom. And we meet a queen, the queen of the Fireflies, or the boss, uh, named Marlene, and she basically asks you to take a young girl named Ellie across the country in this, um, to get her to safety. And the, the game really does a great job, especially with the performances between these two characters. The dynamic um, the relation they get throughout the game is amazing, and it's always great thanks to their performances and motion capture. You tell the animations, what they do in the game is really outstanding, and as Troy Baker is a great job as Joel, the old man. If you don't know who Troy Baker is, you should check out um, games like Bioshock Infinite, and um, yeah, basically Bioshock Infinite and also Infinite Second Son, where he played Delson Rowe, and in Bioshock he played Booker DeWitt. So he does a great job here as well, and Ashley Johnson does actually a great job as Ellie. As her performance makes you feel for her, and she's not um, a, a sympathetic character. She's not a damsel in distress in this, as she is a tough survivor. She survived in a world where she does not really know what was our past lives. She was born into this apocalypse, and it's amazing to see how she reacts to stuff. And it's just really good, and she does. She was never born, like I said, she was never born, and she always starts the world as this good place, but it never was. And Joel is kind of like trying to tell her and all this stuff and all, and it really does build this relationship as they as um as the story continues and the pacing is outstanding of course like it starts off uh, when you learn the controls and it continues and when you learn little little by little of the weapons you get and the uh, equipment you use and how to use your equipment and all this stuff the game really does a great job and the story really does have doesn't really take any twists and turns that that too are too big for you to handle. But it does it so well, thanks to the writing, that the game never falls apart in the end. And, of course, um, no characters actually fall flat. There's never a character that's underdeveloped, or actually a character who is forgettable, or the performances are horrible. Everyone does an outstanding job when it comes to performances, and that's amazing in this game. As in a lot of games, 
we have characters who are sometimes interesting, we have other characters that are generally forgettable, and pulled out of the game way too early. But The Last of Us does a great job with these characters, that you spend enough time with them to care about them, and you want to see what happens to them. And Joel is actually a flawed character as well. He isn't a perfect character, he's not a hero, but he does, but what he goes through as a character in the beginning of the game, really does um, hold on to him throughout the 20 years as a character throughout this infection apocalypse. And it's, and you see as in the ending of the game, like, not in the end, but throughout this game, we want Joel to actually be someone who doesn't, like, um, fear of the past anymore. He's a, we want him to actually love again. We actually want him to care for the people. And that's what this game really does let us do. It lets us become Joel in some way. And, like, um, let's talk about visuals, because I don't want to talk too much into the story. But graphically, the game on PS3 went to its limits. But on the PS4, the game goes past its limits. The game on PS3 actually had to had to withstand its power. So the game ran at 720p on PS3 and 30 frames per second. But in this game, they boosted it to 1080p and 60 frames per second. Now, a lot of people say it'll be jarring for 60 frames per second. And you can actually there's actually an option where you can switch the game back to its old PS3 version. But if you don't want... If we, me and my brother played it in 60 frames per second, and the game is just as fun as ever to play. It makes it more smoother with its controls. So that's a good thing for the game. Oof, I'm just fine. Um, when it comes to, like I said, graphics and details, it looks amazing. Everything looks good. There's a lot more, the textures are a lot more higher, highly realized. Everything just looks outstanding. The graphics, in other words, is per pitch perfect. There's no technical glitches, there's no stuttering, there's no frame rate problems or anything like that. There's no crashing. None of those problems are in this game. Um, when it comes to gameplay, the game has a lot of gameplay to do. You can be, it's kind of a linear game, yes, but the game actually has some type of choices as how you want to play things out. See the game, you have a backpack, it plays an inventory system, where you can customize, make items, and you can also get pills which are upgrades, and you can also look at books and like hidden trophies, not hidden trophies, but collectibles or diaries and all. Now when it comes to inventory, you can create uh, ba you can create um, a ship, which is like a little knife made out of glass or out of blade, and, and you can use it for like stabbing guys in the neck, or you can use it to open locked doors that you can't open to find get um, extra weapons. You could also um, create um, smoke bombs, you could create nail bombs, Molotov cocktails, you could also create burst aid kits, and it basically involves you to really go explore around the entire game to look for every little little nook and cranny so you can find that little piece of paper or that little binding or that piece of alcohol or that little chip of alcohol that you need to make this. And what's cool is this actually goes into the when it comes to fighting as the game really uh, puts you into battles along with bandits or infected. And the infected in this game are brash, mean, and dangerous as the AI does a great job with them. The AI, they are really programmed really well. And they never do stupid things as if they see once you just look the other way and this, if they see you, you're spotted, and that's it. You can't really hide from them, because they will find you. And it's amazing, because there's not just infected runners or guys who just go slashing at you. There's also clickers who have been infected for a long time, and they get fungus on them. Not only that, they're blind, and they can only hear you. So if you, like, throw a glass in one direction, and they go in that direction, you can just go the other way. Or, if you want to, you can go into full-out battle shooting everyone. You can do battle, but you need to make sure you have enough resources, make sure you have enough bullets, you have enough scraps, uh, monster cocktails, first aid, just to prepare yourself. And make sure you have a shift, because if you don't, you're going to get killed by a clicker, because you can't melee those guys. You can melee the other zombies, but if you try to melee the clickers, it's game over, buddy. But if you're going to melee them, make sure you have like a weapon, like a baseball bat, a crowbar, or an axe or something. Because if you don't, you're good, good as well as dead, and you got to restart that checkpoint. So, the, and it's also fun when it comes to fighting the humans, uh, as they're sometimes bandits or just like soldiers. And it's really cool to play around as you can just, you can also knock them out, you can shiv them, you can beat them up, you can like break their necks, um, shoot them in the head. And it's really gory, the game. That's why it's got its rated M uh, rating. That's why it gets rated M. Because it's blood, there's gory, but there's parts when you shoot someone in the head, their head gushes and blows up, and the blood effects and all. It's really amazing. It's really well done here when it comes to gameplay. And the gameplay never gets boring, actually. You expect some part of the gameplay to be boring or dull or repetitive, but it never gets repetitive because throughout the story in the game, you get new weapons. So you start off with a pistol, then you get another pistol, and then you get a shotgun. 
And then you get like a hunting rifle. And then you get more weapons. I don't want to give away all the weapons you haven't played the game for, but if you got if you have PS4, you should get it right. Oh god, Jesus. Sorry about that ball. Okay. Now, back to what I was saying. There's a lot of stuff to do in the game, so there's always something that's not boring. The game never falls apart, never. There's always there's never a dull moment, in other words. And the game really does make the and if you want to play multiple difficulties, this game has it. There's easy, there's normal, there's hard, there's survivor, and there's grounded mode. And the grounded mode is the most hardest of them all. So um, I played on hard in the PS3 version, it was good. And we played on normal on PS4 and it was just outstanding as the AI are never dumb, they're dull, they're not stupid in our playthroughs. If you have uh, some AI problems, it may be a little thing that happens once in a while, but it won't happen all the time. And Ellie herself's AI is really good and useful. Um, sometimes she can like help out in a battle when you're low on ammo. She can throw a brick at a guy or, or like knife someone. And when you have AI partners in the beginning game like Tess, she can also help you out in battle as well, which is amazing. So like I said, gameplay is amazing. Story, I don't want to say too much of the story because I don't want to ruin it. But the story itself really does have a great ending, an actual, so a lot of ending games, endings are kind of dull, like you don't, like, you're not satisfied with the conclusion. But in this ending, it's really absolute, and it really does, it's not a cliffhanger, because a lot of people say it's a cliffhanger, but in my opinion, it's not. It's really well done as an ending itself, and it doesn't really leave off a sequel, but sometimes it does. It's all based on what do you think of the ending, and I really loved it, in, in my personal opinion. And the game will take you around, if you're playing on higher difficulties, around 16 to 18 hours, 12 to 14 playing on normal difficulty like the fall. And the game itself is just so much fun. And you think that after the campaign, that's all there is. But there's not, because if you get this version, you get all the, you get the campaign DLC call left behind, take place before, era, and during the events of the game. I don't want to spoil too much, but the game... It basically, you play as Ellie throughout these two hours of campaign DLC. They take place before the game and during it. I can't say too much, but before you are, you play as Ellie and you meet um, one of Ellie's close friends, Riley. And their performances in there are still great. You, um, you also get more context about Ellie as who she is and um, why, um, who is this friend of hers. And you basically meet this friend and you basically grow this relationship throughout the game. And you basically are, in the game, you don't really do a lot of fighting until, like, later on into the game. Where, in the game, you're basically just exploring an abandoned mall. And you basically are talking, you're doing little things like kids being kids. You are going to merry-go-round drive. You do a water fight uh, level, which is kind of cool. And you can take pictures. And there's even a pun book that's just for fun, if you just like that type of thing. And the game never falls apart in any part. Not even the DLC falls apart, in my opinion. DLC, DLC is just as perfect as the main game. Um, it is also a new type of combat thing that they added here. As in, like I said, in the original campaign, you had to fight either humans or a click or infected. But in the DLC, when you're not in the past, you are basically... You sometimes have to fight both clickers and humans, which is a great idea. As this idea is so well done, it makes the difficulty a lot more higher in basically how to set up these battles. because. You'll be in a room, and you have to hide, and there's humans on one side, and there's clickers around, just walking around, very noisy, and you're just screeching. And you basically have to decide how to really, like, get each side to kill each other in a way without you getting caught in the middle. Which is a really cool idea. I have, I really did like it so much that, that at times, I really wanted it to be in the original campaign. But I think that would make the game a little bit harder for some people, but I don't know. It was still fun for me. Um, I don't really see any problems with the game overall. There's no real problems at all. And just like I said, as soon as I was done with the campaign, I thought that would be it. But no, the Naughty Dog decided to add a multiplayer to it. And you know, in some games, when you play a main campaign, uh, and you're like, it's, you feel like you're really badass, and you really do feel like it's fun, and then when you play multiplayer, it doesn't feel like a campaign at all. This feels exactly like a campaign, somehow. I don't know how they do it, but it's amazing. It's a four-on-four four, uh, player system. It's only eight players. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's basic. It's basically on four and four, and you basically have three game modes: a supply raid. I think that it's basically two versions of team death match, where there's a twenty count, and then you're eliminated. Or there's another team death match mode, where you are. There's like one set of people, and if all four are eliminated on one team, that's it. And then there's an interrogation mode, which in my opinion is the favorite of the bunch, 
basically because you basically have to stick with your team and you have another team. And this team has to find a safe box. And basically you have to go through these bad guys, wound them, and then you have to interrogate them to f five times in order to get the pick box. We also have to worry about people interrogating you and your team to get your pick box. And if you open up the lock, game over. And that's it. And it's so fun as it's intensifying. You always feel like, oh, there's someone behind me. And, and you never feel overpowered, but you never feel underpowered either. It's just amazing how they did it overall. The multiplayer on its own is just worth it. Even though there's only three game modes, these game modes are enough to keep you in, make you play for weeks on end. This will keep you up all night at times, just playing this game, this online features. It's amazing. You have to choose either between playing as a firefly or a military hunter. And you can also switch these um, roles. So if you go to week, there's like a week or day system where you have to do certain objectives to do like uh, get nine downs and you get like extra rare parts. Or you can um, get like nine executions, which you do when you wound a guy, which is also kind of a uh, cool challenge. You have, like challenge perks and daily uh, challenges to do. Whenever you beat one, you always go to another. And when you go to week 12, you basically start in the other team. And it's kind of cool to play the other team. Not because they have different guns, but you all have the same guns. But it also, like, um, I don't know, it's just fun to do. Because it always makes you want to try to do it all over again. It works so well at times, it never falls apart. And that's just a great thing. Overall, The Last of Us Remastered and The Last of Us, the main uh, game for PS3, is a great game. It's a masterpiece, in my opinion. I wish I could have reviewed this last year, but I decided to review it this year, and I must say right now, I really do love this game overall. There's no real problems with it. Um, if the only reason you should not buy this game is for PS3 fans, but like I said, my brother got this for PS3, and then he got it for PS4, and, he, and we still don't regret it. And I must say though, if you are going to get this, be careful, make sure you have 50 gigabytes of your console clean, because this is going to eat up 50 gigabytes of your system. Do you think it's worth it? It's all up to you, really. For me and my brother, we thought it was worth it, so we got it. So, that's like really what I'd say. It's a masterpiece. It, it's a, a perfect game. It's outstanding out there. It's one of those high games that you can never be beat. In my opinion, I really know, I could say it's a lot better than other games out there. That's on the PS4 and Xbox One right now. And this beats them all, in my opinion. This is the best game on next gen. So that's what I have to say about it. So overall... My final verdict for The Last of Us Remastered in the original title is an overall perfect score of a 10 out of 10. A masterpiece. It's amazing. It's perfect. It never falls apart in any minister. If you have a PlayStation 4, get it. That's just simple. That's uh, a thing you must do because it's a perfect game. And it's made for those who never got a chance to play it on PS3. Because sometimes they are Xbox owners or PC owners and they came to this console. Just play the game. For yourself, get it, enjoy it, and love it. It's a great game to play. Um, I'll be doing other reviews soon, so wait for, watch my channel for other videos. So please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Also like, um, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on Twitter is the Michael Lennon 97. So check that out, guys. Um, just I'll be back with other reviews. Uh, I'll be reviewing TMNT, that Team from Ninja Turtles movie. Um, I still have to review Sniper Elite 3, so I'll try to review that by the end of the month. So, bye guys.